ちらの精鋭を出せThere comes a time in a child's life when they discover the Japanese samurai. I remember coming across a book about them in my elementary school library and was immediately captivated. It's a life changing moment, and for the better part of my childhood, I was obsessed with the weapons, clothing, and coat of honor of these cultured warriors. Like everything else, that obsession eventually faded, replaced by some other distraction until some trigger comes along that brings back those memories of childlike fascination. Ghost of Tsushima from Sucker Punch was a not so subtle reminder that, damn, samurais are awesome. Taking place in Japan's early history, I was enamored from beginning to end as I guided a lone samurai on his quest for revenge, and look awesome doing it. Sucker Punch has constructed a lavish playground with a romantic eye, programming a perpetually gorgeous, always moving scenery that establishes its own unique sense of style that never strays far from the realism of its time and place. Ghost has its roots in real world Japanese history. In 1274, the island of Tsushima hosted a significant battle that punctuated the first Mongol invasion. 80 samurai were sent to push back the Khan's forces, but were slaughtered on the shores of Kamodama Beach. You'll bear witness to this event through the eyes of Jin Sakai, a samurai whose uncle is Lord Shimura, the Jito of Tsushima. Jin barely survives the onslaught and regains consciousness outside a small village where he meets Yuna, a young woman searching for her brother amidst the carnage. Jin's honor demands that he rescue his uncle from the clutches of Kautu Khan, the fictional grandson of Kubla Khan, who has taken up residence in Shimura's fortress. Their first encounter ends poorly for Jin, who experiences a second humiliating defeat. Collecting a small handful of allies who have suffered their own private losses as a result of the occupation, Jin leads a guerrilla war against the Mongols to free his people at the risk of sacrificing his honor. After playing the game for about an hour, I stumbled upon the realization that the sort of video gamey things Ghost of Tsushima had me doing were those I've done so many times before across different video games. Sucker Punch has cherry picked material to such a degree that the game doesn't quite have its own unique identity. Everything from eavesdropping on enemy NPCs and killing them from cover to crafting upgrades and solving traversal puzzles has been cribbed from the likes of other open world adventure games from the last 5 to 10 years. Assassinating soldiers from rooftops and hiding places is uniquely Assassin's Creed, and puzzling out the most accessible route to reach a mountaintop shrine is reminiscent of the tomb hunting in Rise of the Tomb Raider. Toss in some Witcher 3 style exploration, combat encounters that feel a little like Arkham Asylum and Sekiro, bake at 400 degrees for 30 minutes. And the end result is a familiar, abundant feast of a video game. Calling out Ghost of Tsushima's inspirations is not meant to be taken as an indictment against Sucker Punch. What they've done with Ghost is build a gameplay experience that takes the best mechanics from the best games, making it a sort of gaming's greatest hits collection that works really, really well. Heavily steeped in Japanese culture and folklore, Ghost of Tsushima is set in a dreamy and picturesque version of the island, replete with sprawling fields covered in tall grass and beautiful flowers, mystical bamboo forests, and dreamy woodlands made up with Japanese maple trees that rain down gold and crimson leaves in the most dramatic, photogenic way possible. You'll run up and down the island, either on foot or on horseback, to facilitate the process of pushing the Mongols back, assist those inside Jin's inner circle, and respond to the needs of a downtrodden populace. One of my favorite distractions involves seeking out musicians who spin tales of legendary warriors, presented as animated Sumie paintings, that lead Jin on the hunt for the source of such tales, learning new techniques and acquiring near mythical gear. The game has a lot of story missions to pick and choose from, but mainlining those activities means missing out on some of the great side stories and all of the character building and decorating options that can be found all over the island. I normally don't care about playing dress up with my player character unless absolutely necessary, but the dearth of awesome looking costumes, hats, and katana tanto decorations had me agonizing on what items I wanted to use to maximize Jin's cool factor. Your attention is frequently pulled in the direction of notable landmarks by a golden bird, and it got to a point where I absolutely had no problem stopping what I was doing to follow it to where it wanted me to go, be it a hot spring that increases Jin's maximum health, statues of honor that offer vanity gear, scenic spots to compose haikus, and fox dens. 
See, in Japanese folklore, foxes are considered messengers of the Shinto spirit Kami, and following them in-game takes you to a shrine that, when honored, increases the number of stat-boosting charms Jin can equip. What's more important about this experience, however, is that sometimes the foxes stick around so you can pet them. That's quality Game of the Year content. Exploring the island's wonders comes with a risk, as Jin inevitably encounters antagonists, be they bandits waiting to ambush the unaware or Mongol soldiers patrolling their ill-gotten territory. As a samurai, it is expected to meet these encounters head-on, which is why you will always have the option to initiate a standoff. Standoffs play out very much like Old West shootouts, in that two opposing fighters confront each other to see who will take the first swing. Enemies will try to trick you by fainting movements, and if Jin swings, he's left open to take a crushing blow. Otherwise, waiting for the enemy to move first lets you kill them in one slash. What's really fun, though, is upgrading the skill to its maximum so you can kill multiple enemies in a single standoff. Standoffs are pretty easy to win during the early parts of the game, but as new foes are introduced, your opponents get smarter and more patient. The bandits, ronin, and mongol patrols that make up these standoffs are small fry. The meat of the game's combat is reserved for encounters against the enemy to loosen their grip on controlled territory. Ghosts of Tsushima favors two methods of attack, stealth and open battle. It is entirely possible to take out an entire village of hostiles by going loud, though you do risk the lives of any hostages involved. Sometimes, though, it's easier to sneak your way around and pick off enemies one at a time. There are always places to hide for every engagement, and throughout the story, Jin amasses a fine selection of toys and gadgets that facilitate quiet kills. Wind chimes can be used as noisemakers to pull people from patrol routes and even be upgraded to release poison. Ranged weapons such as bows, kunai, and a blowgun can take out targets quietly from a distance, and smoke bombs create space to run away or sneak in a quick assassination. No tool in the samurai's arsenal is greater than the katana, a weapon that accounts for the majority of the game's spectacular and riveting sword fights. Ghost of Tsushima's combat features the guard-breaking mechanics of Sekiro and Arkham Asylum-style crowd control. With the exception of archers, the enemies you face need to have their guards broken before your blade can reach the gooey, messy center. The Mongols have four types of enemies at their disposal, and at first, juggling their manner of attacks and defense can be tricky, but over time, Jin learns stances that are specifically designed to wear down spearmen, brutes, sword fighters, and shielded grunts. These stances are equipped with special moves that efficiently break through enemy guards and open them up to physical attacks. Upgrading them with technique points makes these stances stronger to such a degree that a successful guard break also imparts significant physical damage. Most enemy attacks can be parried, but if it's timed correctly, bringing your sword up just as your opponent lands their attack triggers a perfect parry, leaving the other fellow staggered and open for a critical hit, and for lesser enemies, it's a one-hit kill. Ghost favors combat encounters that feature one or more of each enemy type, which means you're always going to be engaged in every battle, as you defend, switch stances, time out parries, and maneuvering around unblockable attacks that are identified by red marks on the enemy's weapons. One of the things that I loved seeing was watching my perfect parries cause nearby soldiers to drop their weapon in panic, scuttling backward in a vain attempt to escape before my sword comes down to stab them. Whether you prefer sneaking around or starting a fight out in the open by calling out the enemy's strongest warrior, combat is fun and looks awesome. Ghost of Tsushima gives you the freedom to engage the enemy however you want, with few story-related exceptions. It fluidly transitions from stealth to action and back again with a lot of finesse and never makes you feel like you messed up for drawing the enemy's attention unless explicitly told not to. However, the most elegant and intimate of battles in the game are reserved for duels. From time to time, you'll be put up against formidable warriors, be they generals or a lone swordsman. Duels essentially function as boss fights between significant NPCs and put your combat skills to the test inside a small, confined arena. Dueling places a stronger emphasis on the practice of wearing down the opponent's guard because there's no way to damage them otherwise. Fast and hard-hitting, dueling opponents require patience and attention beyond standard battles, making it the most reminiscent of Sekiro. And even though these duels are a challenge, they're not nearly as off-putting as the other game's most basic, brutal engagements. Whatever form combat takes, the reward for defeating the enemy are technique points that can be used to upgrade Jin's abilities and the effectiveness of his ghost weapons. There's so much to love about Ghosts of Tsushima, and a lot of that love comes from how smooth everything is. 
Riding around the island on horseback is a joy because the animal is really responsive, unlike those featured in Red Dead Redemption 2. The UI is clean and largely non-existent until you actually need it, like when combat is triggered or when you near an objective marker. Swiping up on the DualShock's touchpad triggers a guiding wind that blows a visible breeze towards your destination, an effect that adds beauty to your surroundings. The fast travel system is rather swift and takes little time to load you into the next area. With very little noticeable open world jank, the amount of polish on display here says a lot about Sucker Punch's skills as a game developer. Going forward, I suspect that no review of Ghost of Tsushima would be complete without mentioning its presentation. The island, as it is rendered in-game, is a place I so desperately want to visit because it is an incredibly gorgeous place. Sucker Punch has achieved a level of visual splendor that is unequal to any of the games I've played this year so far. The land is enchanting and unreal as fireflies dance above the tall grass at nighttime, early morning fog creates eerie supernatural atmosphere, and forest floors covered by fallen Japanese maple leaves is enough to take your breath away and give the in-game photo mode a thorough workout. Cutscenes are presented with a cinematic flair with long, dramatic camera angles, tight action shots, and stirring scenes between Jin and his allies. The characters are voiced by an English-speaking cast, but to get the most authentic experience, you'll want to switch over to the Japanese voiceover track and turn on the subtitles. To take it a step further, Sucker and Punch included a Kurosawa mode that locks in the foreign language dialogue with added audio work to make it sound like an older film. There's even a black and white filter, complete with grain and dirt, to complete the effect. Awesome as this is, I recommend saving it for a second playthrough, lest you miss out on some really stunning use of color. I don't do it often, but as of this review, I'm two trophies away from earning a platinum. I'm making the effort to get it because that means I can spend more time with this wonderful game. With the main story and all of the side tales completed, I'm just not ready to say goodbye yet. What Ghost of Tsushima lacks in terms of gameplay originality, it more than makes up for it through the high finesse of its craft. I grew obsessed with the game during the review period, and when I wasn't playing it, I was always thinking about it. The disparate mechanics seen in other games have been reshaped and retooled until no hard edges exist, creating an experience that feels smooth and responsive. Tsushima itself is a gorgeous setting with numerous biomes that benefit from amazing lighting effects and brilliant texture work. It takes some time getting there, but Jin's story is a fascinating one as he struggles with his growing identity as the ghost amidst others taking him to task for using tactics unbecoming of a samurai. Ghost of Tsushima is a game I could not put down because the combat is so good, the world is so fun to explore, and the stories it has to tell are rich and compelling. I'm sorry to say this sucker bunch, but when is the sequel coming out? Dark Station gives Ghost of Tsushima five stars.